Three years and I'm still counting my blessings. Journal entry, Sunday, February 19th. We moved you to Prairie St. John's on your birthday, February 16th. Let me just say that I put in a terrible Valentine's Day. I got the flu of the century, and you also decided not to go into residential treatment, but to do outpatient <laughs> instead. Never let it be said that you're a pushover, sir. I slept much of the day as much to get over the flu as to try to push the reality of your decision out of my consciousness. I just don't want to do this again, ever, and I needed you to make the deepest commitment you could. Later, you did. You agreed to residential rehab. I was proud of you on your birthday. You checked yourself into Prairie St. John's and were honest, at least as far as I know, about some things I have never heard you actually say before, and I'm sure that wasn't easy. You said to the woman at Prairie, some way to turn 47, huh? She said, but what a way to start yeah. your 47th year. Despite how sick I was, and in spite of the mask they made me wear, and the nap I took first in your hospital bed and then in the waiting room at Prairie because I still felt like garbage, I really loved that, and it gave me hope. I believe you can stop drinking. I do. Later. I love you, and I'm anxious for you to come home. I'm anxious for the new us, both the highs and the lows, and the ups and the downs, and the forwards and the backwards, but mostly the forwards. We're going to do this. Wednesday, March 1st. So I haven't written for a long time because I got lulled into thinking things were going well. Lulled in by you. Because I forgot that you are a world-class liar, a shapeshifter of truth. You called me so down because you can't come home for at least two weeks. Then your therapist, Joanne, called me, and I was reminded that the truth is squishy for you. I was reminded that you'll tell me anything you think I want here to keep me. I felt foolish all over again because, again, I naively allowed you to manipulate me into believing you were making progress. But Joanne says you're in deep denial about everything. I've been thinking we should renew our vows in Hawaii this summer. Now I feel so stupid for thinking that. Tomorrow, I'm speaking to your group therapy session, and you won't know I'm coming until I get there. How will that go? What will you do? Saturday, March 4th. This has been a tough 48 hours. I met with your group on Thursday. I still can't really put into words what that experience was like. It was hard. I've never met seven better people in my life. I've also never met more broken people in my life, and you might be the most broken of them all. All your possibility, all your intelligence, all your gifts, Actually, I think you're lucky. You have this rare opportunity to dig deep and reflect and change and grow. The question is, will you take the opportunity and will you do the work, the very hard work? Sunday, March 5th. Yesterday I saw you and you told me you got two sponsors. I'm really proud of you. Joanne told me she didn't believe you'd ever get a sponsor. She doesn't believe you'll continue to go to outpatient or AA meetings once you're released. I think she's wrong. I hope she's wrong. Keep on working, Maz. You're worth it. We're worth it. Tuesday, March 14th. So you're coming home tomorrow. Joanne called to see how I would feel about you coming home. Am I stupid to be optimistic? Am I naive to hope? Everyone tells me how hard it's going to be. I don't feel that way, and that makes me nervous. You've been gone for six weeks, which at times has felt like forever. Tonight, however, it feels like the blink of an eye, and I'm really nervous. I must reclaim my own sense of integrity. I won't abdicate that again. I so want to believe that this is just over now, but we have a long history of your drinking and lying and manipulation being our truth. How will we forge a new truth? How do I trust that it's real? What will our marriage look like, be like now? I so want to believe that this can and will work, but I also don't want to ever feel as stupid as I have felt over these last six weeks. March 15th, 2017 is the beginning of the next phase of our lives. Here's to whatever is coming next. Sunday, April 16th. This is what came next. I am in such bliss one month after you came home that I still wake up every morning awash in gratitude for your sobriety. I'll reiterate what I said to the therapist. If this is our new future, I will bless the six weeks we endured to come out on this end. This year has been hard and nothing guarantees the future, but today, I thank God for you, for Quinn, for us, and for all the blessings. We are reborn, and I love you, Andrew John. Oh, real name. I know. <laughs> Today. And we have stayed this way for three plus years now. Tomorrow isn't guaranteed for anyone, so we take one day at a time, and we continue to celebrate the phenomenal blessings we have been given and the ones we have been earned. Mm. 
and we walk our path together. Cattle Pat, Ted. It's been good. Yeah, do you people even know his real name is Andrew John? When we got married, I asked him if we could please put his real name on our invitations, and three people called me and said, what happened to Maz? Who's this Andrew John guy? Like I ditched the guy I'd been with for six and a half years and overnight was getting married to someone else. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking to a, a guy I know, he's a, he used to be, the, well, he's, he's a professor in the chemistry department from Cordia, and he's, I know him as Chopper. Or Chopper, if you're American. So, so I told him this story, and he goes, oh, yeah, it happened to me, because um, my wife put, you know, um, she and Donald would like, <laughs> would like your, <laughs> would like to invite you to their wedding, and they went, who, who's this guy? Yeah, it's a real conundrum. Yeah. Also, we need to address from the previous post that the other word that um, absolutely was not said correctly for most of this listening audience would be aluminum, not aluminium, but, you know, it's subtle. <laughs> I won't read the last one. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No more mascara down my face. No, you're good. Not today. I'm next. 